Yo guys, Jonathan here. Welcome to part two of the MacBook Pro i9 throttling fiasco. Big shout out to everyone who watched part one all the way through. If you missed that, I'll link it up here and down below. And I wanna preface this video by saying the title, everybody is wrong about the 2018 MacBook Pro, was more of a blanket statement to those who kind of were blindly following headlines and hype and straight out saying that the i9 was slower than the i7, the i9 six core was inherently slower than last year's quad core i7. And honestly, my only point with that was to showcase how the laptop actually performed in as many real world situations as I possibly could. I wanna give a quick shout out to Philly D, someone I watch, someone I look up to. He does a great job of reporting the news, but also knowing when to step back and take accountability so in that spirit, I could totally say I was wrong if I came off like I was blindly supporting Apple because that is not the case. I thought it was clear. If I wasn't, I still to this day think the i9 is not properly cool. I don't think the laptop is reaching its full potential. I've told Apple that. I just wanted to showcase it like how every one of you out there uses it. Forget benchmarks, forget trying to stress the CPU. I wanted to show it off like if you use this machine every day. So last video was more of a showcase of the highest spec six core i9 configuration against the lowest spec baseline six core i7 configuration. This video was tackling how it stacks up against last year's highest spec quad core i7 because I've seen so many statements saying that the i9 was inherently slower. Again, just to be 100% clear, I don't think the i9 is running to its maximum potential. Mr. iPhone Doe did a great video showcasing how he squeezed extra performance out of the i9 by ramping up the fans. So if you guys wanna check that out, I'll drop a link down below. Again, my job here was to kind of showcase and document how this performs out of the box for the everyday person. I've seen the crazy Reddit thread from someone way smarter than me talking about how to optimally tune or hack these MacBook Pros in better performance. So if that's something you wanna see, definitely drop a comment down below and I will definitely look into it. Quickly before I jump in for testing, both MacBook Pros were plugged into power at all times and then all files and projects were run off an external OWC, Thunderblade V4 SSD. For those curious about speed or wondering if it's gonna bottleneck things, that's actually just about as fast as the internal SSDs in these MacBook Pros, nearly three gigabytes a second and the main reason is for those large video files, it's impossible to store everything on these MacBook Pros, especially when you're dealing with base models. So first up is Adobe Lightroom Classic CC, and the first task was to import 50 100 megapixel Hasselblad RAW photos with a one by one build preview. Contrary to thoughts out there, the i9 was roughly 28% faster or had a 28% improvement, however you wanna word it, but nonetheless, the i7 was definitely not faster. Next from there, I took those 50 raw photos and then exported them to JPEG in Lightroom Classic CC. And again, the i9 MacBook Pro was about 27% faster. Next from there, I'm gonna hop over to Handbrake, which is super dependent on the CPU. I did two tests for this. One was transcoding a two hour movie into H.264 and then a more demanding test, transcoding that two hour movie into H.265. For the H.264 transcode, the i9 was roughly 17% faster than the quad-core i7, and as we jump over to the H.265 transcode, you can see one, this took a hell of a lot longer, it's a lot more demanding, but the difference was actually smaller here. The i9 was faster this time though, it was only about 12%, which makes total sense. It's a longer, more demanding process, so that heat kind of really builds up, and I think if the i9 was better cooled on this MacBook Pro, we would see a bigger difference in performance. Where I saw a massive difference though, and this is more so to do with the advantage of Coffee Lake and HEVC encoding, was using compressor, transcoding a 4K H.264 file, 22 minutes, into 4K HEVC, and the i9 MacBook Pro was 54% faster than last year's quad-core i7 which is a giant jump. From there, moving on to Adobe Premiere CC. And again, my purpose with this is to make this as wide and varied as possible using as many cameras and codecs as I possibly could. So first up, with that Airy Alexa Mini 4K ProRes test, the i9 MacBook Pro was about 10% faster than last year's i7. From there, moving on to 5K red raw footage and then dropping this into a 4K timeline exported into H.264, the i9 MacBook Pro was about 13% faster. Next is Sony a7 III 4K footage at 100 megabits per second. I dropped this into a 1080p timeline and then exported that into a 1080p H.264 file. And again, the i9 MacBook Pro is about 9% faster. Where I didn't see a huge difference though was using Canon C200 raw light footage inside Adobe Premiere. The i9 MacBook Pro was only about 3% faster, which really isn't much at all. Again, this is a clear example of where the i9 is not performing to its max potential. So for now, if you use a Canon C200, if you use Adobe Premiere, it's not the biggest upgrade. I also kind of want to interject and talk about Premiere Pro versus Final Cut. It's not that I'm crapping all over Premiere Pro. It's just imagine that you did something every day, every day, 
You watched your friend try to do the exact same task, but the way they were doing it was slower and less efficient. Why wouldn't you tell them your way? That's all I'm trying to do, but the good news is Adobe actually reached out because of that video, so it means they're watching their care. And I'm hoping that because of videos like these, Apple listens, Adobe listens, and the end result is better performance for everyone everywhere. From there, speaking of Final Cut Pro 10, jumping over to that testing, this is a showcase of how I'm gonna show you guys numbers no matter what they are. With the Airy 4K ProRes footage, the i9 MacBook Pro was actually about 13% slower than the i7. From there, moving on to 5K Red Raw footage, I am actually transcoding this into 4K 422 ProRes, and the i9 MacBook Pro was actually 24% faster, so in this case, it definitely had an advantage. Next from there, again, is Sony a7 III 4K footage dropped into a 1080p timeline, and then exported into a 1080p H.264 file. The i9 MacBook Pro was 12% faster. Moving on to Canon C200 raw light footage. In this case, in Final Cut Pro 10, the i9 MacBook Pro export was 10% faster. But if we hop over to DaVinci Resolve, in this case, the quad core i7 from last year was actually about 9% faster. So yeah, in certain cases, the i7 from last year does outperform the i9, but in most situations, in most of the testing, the i9 is faster all the way around, even with its problems. So kind of take this information for what it's worth, use that towards your buying decision. You might think to yourself, hey, I have last year's model, I don't need to upgrade, that's cool. Maybe you wanna buy that one. Those are actually 400 bucks off on B&H right now, or maybe the difference in performance with the six core is enough for you. Honestly, in my opinion right now, the mid-tier six core MacBook Pro is probably where your best bang for your buck is. Aside from that, hopefully you found this video helpful. Again, my job is to showcase these things in the realest possible way. Hopefully you appreciate that. If you did, drop a like. Definitely subscribe for more MacBook Pro coverage. Still have the 13-inch model to cover. Thank you guys again. This is Jonathan. If you missed part one, it's also down below, and I will catch you guys later.